Hey everybody, Kyle Farley here with AMPM Guide Service and Hooked in Travel. Today is all about active target with the proper settings and setup to get you on the water with the best quality picture. Stay tuned. So overall the active target settings are pretty simple and easy to set up. There's not a whole lot to it. To start here we're going to make sure our transducer is pointed straight and set the notch properly. So other than that, we're going to start with enabling our active target on our HDS or Elite FS or HDS Carbon. We're going to hit our gear icon, we're going to go to System, we're going to go to Advanced, Features, Active Target, and then we're going to make sure we hit On. We're also going to make sure that our active target unit is up to date. So you go to Settings, Sonar, Active Target Installation, Software Version, and make sure you have the latest update. Check out the previous video that we have on how to update your active target properly for the best possible picture. Another good thing too as well, when you're using your full screen for your active target, we're gonna auto hide the menu or we can flick the screen aside. So you can go pages, system, advanced, user interface, auto hide, menu, on. It opens up more screen real estate automatically without having to swipe it off. For the mode, we're gonna turn auto off for the forward, down, and scout. You don't want it to incorrectly adjust for another mode while you're using it, and it works best if you manually set it. The icon pencil mark that you have on the mode will actually save your settings, so when you change back and forth, it'll use your previous settings you were at. For forward range, we turn auto off. We wanna set this to four to five times the depth manually. So you're manually setting it out to the distance from the boat. You can push it out to 80 to 100 feet, depending on what you're seeing and the water you're in. Because you have the ability to see those fish sometimes, so you can capitalize on it. But as a general rule, we want about four to five times the depth. So and also in shallow water, we want to turn that transducer one to two clicks up, usually less than 10 feet of water. Another thing most people are doing is they're actually using forward mode as a down mode, but not setting the forward mode quite far as out, and then just being able to jig right below the boat. And in that way, you're able to look and view in around you, but also down below the boat, especially if you're working up at the front casting deck. For downrange, if auto does a decent job of keeping bottom within the bottom 20% of the screen, you can leave it on that. You might have to set it to a specific depth if you're moving it along drop-offs or moving spots all the time, so it doesn't have to readjust all the time for that new depth. So when manually setting it, keep it 10 feet deeper than the bottom. Another thing to note when setting the bottom depth having the bottom at 20% or 10 feet deeper than the bottom, you're gonna have increased vertical height of your returns for your image. To minimize this, you can actually increase your range on the bottom to double or add an extra 10 feet more. Those vertically stretched out images are gonna appear more accurate and proportional by setting in the depth a little deeper. For contrast, we turn auto on off. We usually set our contrast 80 to 85% on forward mode. So you take off this green auto tab and it puts you into manual mode. 85% might clutter up your screen, but it's gonna give you more detail. Running it a little hotter visually like this, we see fish pop up quicker and as it moves closer to the cone angle. And it's easier for our eyes to pick up. Another way we can adjust this is to increase the contrast till it's fuzzy and then back it down till it cleans up the image, but still gives you the most detail in those returns. Typically the contrast on auto, if you choose to use it, is plus eight to plus 10 at 10 feet or less. Dirtier the water, you have to sometimes go high on the contrast. The higher the contrast is easier to see the bait. The deeper the water, the more contrast you need to reach out to where you're looking. The clearer the water sometimes, you may not need as much contrast and dirtier, you may have to bump it up. In ice fishing, there's more stability in the water column and below the ice. You're not going to need as much. The dirtier the water clarity, the less clear your image is going to be with any of this new type of technology on the forward facing sonar. So your settings all depends on your water clarity and your depth and what you visually like, and what you're able to pick up and interpret. For stop sonar, all it does is stop the sonar recording on the screen using the inline switch to turn off the transducer in the module itself so you don't have a constant draw of power. Stable view, we keep this on. Helps keep the image level in regular use and stable in rough water. Helps to stabilize your image just like a camera sensor does. Noise rejection, we keep this off to low. Low is safe, but don't go any higher. Medium or high, you might miss some detail. 
As you turn this up, you will lose returns that are important in identifying fish and structure. You'll see more fish with it off. Run it without any noise filter on. When you have it on high, it seems you don't see anything unless it's really big fish. You want to see everything you can. You can see your line and your knot. Has an effect on everything you see on your screen. It simply redraws over top of the image and paints over it. It doesn't really know what's supposed to be there and what's not, so you tend to lose permanent information. Instances where you might use it would be heavy boat traffic, which causes a lot of debris in the water. Lots of debris from current or really thick plankton layers or in really dirty water. But 99% of the time, we're going to keep it low to off. Clearer the water, the less noise rejection you should need. Putting it on low, medium, or high can take away some of your smaller bait fish and returns you may be missing on the edge of the cone. For palette, number three is light amber. This is the most common and the best for contrast. One and six are good as well. You can see bottom hardness as well. Use whatever fits your eyes the best and makes those images pop for you for your interpretation. Number five, red can be good contrast to make bait and bigger fish pop and it can be a bit better to interpret bottom hardness. So on forward, the black and darkest backgrounds, you can get away with the noise rejection completely off. You can see all the fine detail with the background without it washing out with the lighter shaded backgrounds on other palettes. Two, three, and five show the intensities better. It's easier to spot small fish within trees and other minute details, better if you had to use the noise filter to low and with other backgrounds. One and four tend to be better for our customers that are more so colorblind, especially in high sunshine too as well, helps them. Range grid, we shut that off. Adds too much clutter to the screen. We have the ranges numbered on the top and the bottom to show our depth and range out from the transducer. You may want to use it if you don't have the best eyesight or you're just new to active target, but it's all personal preference, but most of us will keep that off. Default mode takes you back to factory settings out of the box. It's not something we want, but if you want a base starting point, it's something you can select and start over again. If you have a blank SD card in the unit, you can do a screen record on what's displaying on the screen. Mode icon lets you select where you're gonna put your icon for the boat and the transducer, where boat's in the screen. Upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. Scout mode settings. So range, how far are you out you wanna look in relation to your environment you're in and the type of cover you have in front of you and your reaching distance is the same as forward mode. So generally decrease this by 10%, then forward mode. So if it says 87% or if we're on 85, then we usually decrease it to 75 or 77. Yeah, you generally decrease this by six to 10%. For noise rejection, we keep this off to low to maximize our detail and to see our returns. Flip, depending on how you have your active target, you might have to flip it around Stable view, we keep this on. For palettes on scout mode, number three tends to be the best for contrast, clarity, and interpretation by far compared to the other colors. Number two, then number five are your next best, then six, then one, and last, number four. This all depends on your eyes and what works best for you. At the end of this video here, we got a bit of tips going forward to help you better understand your active target and for better interpretation. For general use, we wait for the fish body movement in action of the head versus the tail. You're looking for shadows off the bottom. This helps, but it all depends on the pointed cone angle in the column and the elevation of the fish in the water column. Rotating the transducer on a pole that's separate where it's mounted on the boat can actually articulate up and down. So a lot of people are keeping this a secret with the active target in scout mode. It makes it 10 times more effective and easier. So a transducer in scout mode is locked in on a single angle and on a kind of a downward angle on a fixed transducer pole or a trolling motor mount. The, mo the most advantage comes from with an articulated mount on the edge of the boat. You're able to move it left and right and up and down and you can follow fish and it takes the game to a whole nother level. When I'm guiding, I can point the transducer right at fish in scout mode while in scout mode turn the pole so the fish is directly in the middle and tell my clients exactly where to cast, where my handle is pointing at in line and line it up with the fish. I can watch fish on their interest level, where they are, if they're following, and see them turn to attack the lure. It makes it a very, very exciting day. It's ideal less than 15 feet of water where it really shines. 
It's also great in suspending fish in the top 15 feet of the water column over deep water. The blacker background helps separate targets for easier viewing. Scout mode is going to be harder to see fish in rock shells, fish that are tucked down in with big boulders, and anything that's got hard return and your fish are just over top of it. The rock bottom and fish are going to blend together as hard returns. The closer to the transducer, the brighter the return is going to be, and the more distinguished in detail you're going to have that fish and that return. The brighter the bottom, the harder the bottom. The thicker the line, the harder the bottom as well. You don't always have to see your bait. Keep working that bait even if you lose it. Keep panning around to see if you can find other fish or movement to focus on. Get your bait within the vicinity within 5 feet and work it. If you need to see, sometimes hopping it along the bottom will help your eyes to locate a bit better on the screen and as you pan around. Clean water, you can use it up to 90 to 100 feet, but 80 seems to be the sweet spot of casting accurately and focusing it on fish. The settings you're going to play around with the most for best picture quality, well besides the range settings, is going to be the noise rejection and contrast. You're going to constantly adjust these settings all day as you move from area to area, even within the same lake. See fish and structure better, so this all depends on your water clarity and conditions on the lake and whereabouts you are. Remember the settings that work best for you and your situation. We're giving you the explanation and the settings. You must fine tune it from there for your individual needs and what you can pick up. So a transducer pole is more advantageous in a lot of situations. The trolling motor mount is better if you're targeting and following specific fish, lining up casts and specific structure, and not using your anchor lock. But as soon as you're using that anchor lock, the fish move in and out of that beam and it's hard to get focus. It's all personal preference towards your needs and how you fish. So that transducer pole, having it move separately from the trolling motor is going to be extremely advantageous if you following contour lines, if you're fishing specific ways and you're staying stationary in anchor lock mode. And even if you put it in scout mode, being able to move that transducer up and down, left and right, is going to add a whole new repertoire of tools to your needs in the way you fish. And it's going to be unreal. Use the biggest screen size you can. Don't split the screen. You want as much pixel data for your image as possible. It also helps if you move your screen vertically towards you as much as possible when you're fishing on your deck. That way you're not kneeling and crouching down so much. In forward mode, the shallower or closer or zoomed in the screen is, the view is enlarged and the fish will look bigger. The return will look brighter as it's closer to the transducer and will show more detail. But as you get further out, it will turn more into blobs or less and less detail as you get further away from the transducer as the 70, 80, and 200 foot mark. The angle of the fish matters in relation to the transducer as well. Schools of bait fish, they look like tons of dots. Fish will look like blobs or bright spots, and especially out at farther distances. Can have picture-like quality on certain angles to see fins and heads articulate, especially when it's closer to that transducer. In general, especially larger distances, bright spots or dots. Bigger fish like tarpon, stripers, really large lake trout, or pike will return better than panfish or bass. Just like 2D, it's knowing your fish you're targeting and seeing them at 20 feet, 50 feet, 70 feet, and 100 feet from your transducer. Measure the cast out from where the fish are on the screen, point, cast, and count down your lure. It's a great starting point in order to learn how to use your active target when targeting specific fish or schools. For down mode, most of the time you're using the same settings as you would be in forward mode, but you're just pointing it downward. Most of the time you're using it in 40 feet or greater depths when you're working baits below you. That way when you're hovering over fish, you're not spooking them as much than if you were in shallower water. Scout mode, you can also use it to sweep under docks. So you don't have to limit yourself with scout mode to 10 feet or less. Use it over 60, 70, 100 feet of water, at any depth of water. It can be used to find any open water schooling fish. Ideal when they're in the top 20 feet of the water column, so bass, walleye, whitefish, that are roaming in the upper water column chasing pelagic species of baitfish or bugs in the open water, can all be scouted in this way. Same as if you're ice fishing too, you can run it right below the ice, because when you have crappie or fish that are cruising right under the column of the ice, you can scout them left and right anywhere you want. 
So this also goes for forward mode in open water. Don't always have to see the bottom. Shorten your bottom depth to the height in the water column that you want to see. Fish can be targeted this way too. You just have to train yourself and get used to not seeing in the bottom. You can actually heat the bracket up at for a less of a severe angle and bend it up. An important thing to understand is how your transducer is mounted and knowing where it points. Every transducer points a little different, maybe a few degrees left or right. Find that sweet spot that gives you the best possible picture. An often overlooked detail, but critical in your setup to make accurate casts. You can use bridge pilings, poles in the water, or other single objects in the water to properly line up your transducer either from the pole or trolling motor mount. Once lined up, figure out what angle gives you the most detailed image and brightest return. Line it up correctly to where your trolling motor or transducer pole is aiming. Thanks for watching our video today. Hope you learned something new. Please like and subscribe. Tight lines, guys. Have a good one.